Hey there, everybody. Uh, I wanted to do a video today. Uh, what I wanted to do it on is familiar spirits. I did an article recently, but I haven't actually done a video on it. So I figured I'd go ahead and do the video so I can add it to my uh, videos on YouTube. Okay, uh, what is a familiar spirit? Familiar spirits are demonic spirits that respond to those that attempt to communicate with the dead or with spirit guides, angels, aliens, or false gods. Uh, they mimic those that the sorcerer, necromancer, medium, or paranormal investigator tries to call up. These spirits are closely linked to an individual by either a person, place, or thing. The most common way known that a familiar spirit communicates with people is through mediums. What is a medium? The word medium from the Latin adjective is medius, meaning middle. It has several meanings that all center on the idea of being in between. Medium means something that lies between two other points, people, or levels. A person who transmits messages from the dead or familiar spirit. Familiar spirits are not who they claim to be. These, familiars, these spirits are demonic spirits that masquerade as our dead loved ones, spirit guides, aliens, angels, or false gods. They manifest in the form of whatever type of spirit that the person is seeking to communicate with. The most common type of spirit that people usually attempt communication with is the spirit of a deceased loved one. The reason for this is our natural emotions of grief and despair that we feel uh, when we lose someone close to us that we love. The enemy takes advantage of our grief. He does not play fair, and he is more cruel than many give him credit to be. The Bible tells us that Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Let's look at familiar spirits in Scripture. I'll start with 1 Samuel uh, 28, 7-15. Then Saul, then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. And Samuel disguised himself and put on other remnant, and he went, and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits, and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore, then layest thou a snare for my life, to cause me to die? And Saul sware to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? He said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said to Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth, and he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he swooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. The woman said to Saul, Why hast thou dis uh, disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me, and answer me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Now, was this a familiar spirit, or was it actually the departed spirit of Samuel? Okay, let's look at scripture and, and see. Among many other controversial topics in the Bible, the incident that took place in 1 Samuel is one of the most 
controversial, especially within the paranormal community. Many scholars have debated on this issue as to whether Samuel himself was actually called up by the medium or if it was a familiar spirit, masquerading as the departed spirit of Samuel. In order for us to know the truth, we must look at scripture and divide the word rightly. After dividing the word rightly and carefully look in this incident as it is written and comparing it with the whole counsel of the Bible, I and many others have come to the conclusion that this was actually a familiar spirit masquerading as the departed spirit of Samuel. This is what led me to the conc this conclusion. If you look at verse 14, it says, And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he swooped to his face to the ground. When we look at the word perceive, it means to identify by means of our senses. The word perceive does not necessarily mean the perception was correct. It only means that the perception was based on the information gathered. Things can be perceived correctly, but they can also be falsely perceived. Number two, if you look at verse 13 and 14, what sawest thou? And the woman said to Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he answered to her, what form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. The medium seen gods ascending out of the earth. I find it interesting that she's seen what appeared to be Samuel among these false gods ascending out of the earth. This tells me it was a familiar spirit, a demonic spirit, as it also ascended out of the earth with the other demonic spirits which are all false gods. Number three, verse seven, seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit. This point is very important as it is actually the verse is, I'm sorry, it is actually the very answer to our question right under our nose. If it had been a snake, it would have jumped up and bit me. The woman hath a familiar spirit. Okay, number four, I divided the word with other scriptures in the Bible. Okay, if you look at 1 Chronicles 10 verses, uh, I'm sorry, verses 10, 13, and 14, it says, So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had the familiar spirit to inquire of it. You see, he actually was inquiring of a familiar spirit. He wasn't not inquiring of Samuel. Okay, then, like I said, he, uh, Saul was actually inquiring of the familiar spirit, not Samuel himself. Then number five, you know, we look at the story in Luke, Luke 16. It's the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The beggar makes a few things clear which show the impossibility that Samuel himself could have possibly come back from heaven to talk to Saul. It shows that when people die, saved people die, they are immediately carried to heaven by an angel and the wicked lift up their eyes being in torment in hell. It also says that there is a great gulf fixed which makes it impossible for someone to leave heaven or hell to talk to the living. Okay, the word fixed, that means it's fixed in place. That means it's not going to be moved. Okay, Abraham also told the rich man that if he, if the unsaved will not believe Moses and the prophets, they will not believe though one come back from the dead. So if God will not allow a departed spirit to come back from heaven or hell, for the gospel's sake. Okay, he will not allow them to come back for any other reason, as it is the gospel that is the most important message anyone could ever give anyone else. These demonic spirits have been here for thousands of years. They have been around us in our families all of our lives for generations, knowing everything we do or say at all times. When a person tries to communicate with the spirit of a departed loved one, 
by medium or EVP analysis, Ouija boards, dowsing rods, pendulums, etc., the familiar spirit will then respond, giving answers that are very personal and only known by this by the spirit they are attempting to contact. This tactic of the enemy is the number one reason why we have so many people in society that believe in earthbound spirits of our departed loved ones. These spirits are so convincing that in most cases it is impossible to deny that there is indeed some kind of spirits out there that is attempting contact with us that have personal knowledge of us and our dead loved ones. These spirits are not, on, not known to, are not only known to mimic the departed spirits of people we knew personally, but they also mimic the departed spirits of people that are familiar to us by a particular place, such as where we live. An example of this would be if a person were to move into a new residence, and a familiar spirit makes his presence known, masquerading as a departed spirit of a person that once lived in that home and died there. The familiarity in this case would be the residence itself. It could also be places such as ancient Indian burial grounds, old war fields, or other places where people were killed or died. If you think about it, like the Waverly Hills Sanitarium, which many people believe is one of the most haunted places on earth. While the building is now primarily a tourist attraction for those fascinated by the paranormal, it used to be a functioning tuberculosis hospital. In 1910, when the hospital was established, this meant to be a place where between 8,000 and 63,000 people died bloody, excruciating deaths, as there would be no real cure for tuberculosis yet until 1943. Waverly Hills was also the site of at least two uh, suicides, which strangely enough took place in the same room. With all of that suffering, it is not surprising that rumors of ghostly apparitions, paranormal activity, and more have cropped up. How these spirits usually work. Just as with any other sin, the enemy will try to tempt us. They will make try to lure us into occult practices. Usually, soon after someone dies, a familiar spirit will attempt to make contact with us. They will try to make their presence known. These attempts can range from the sound of footsteps or things being moved on its own, disembodied voices, Physical manifestations that can be seen, such as the form of dark shadowed figures, orbs, or fully full-bodied apparitions. It could also be strong smells of things that you would associate with a particular person, such as cigar or cigarette smoke or perfume. The problem comes in when people do not test the spirits. Is this concept in line with scripture? When these spirits attempt to contact us or make their presence known, we need to rebuke it in Jesus' name. When this is done, these spirits always flee. If you or someone you know is suffering from a haunting, and after the spirit flees, as described above, um, as I just said, if it returns, you must evaluate the situation. Usually, when there is any type of haunting, the familiar spirit has some kind of legal right to be there. Something must be contributing to an open door to the demonic. Are you or someone in your household or family involved with any occult practices? What are occult practices? Deuteronomy 18 contains the most powerful biblical message outlining the occult. In verses 10 and 11, we find practices of the occult. Deuteronomy 18, 10 and 11. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, 
or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observer of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. These demonic spirits are subject only to Jesus Christ. These demonic spirits always flee at the name of Jesus. This is how we know these familiar spirits are indeed demonic spirits. Jesus said in Mark 16, 16 through 18, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. These demonic spirits, these familiar spirits, are indeed demonic spirits. Um, a lot of people believe that these familiar spirits are actually the the uh, spirits of our dead loved ones. But as you see in scripture, uh, there's no way, it, the Bible does not show in any way that our dead loved ones can come back and talk to us. There's no verse that supports it. Uh, a lot of people look at the verse about Transfiguration Mountain, okay, when Jesus went up with the the um, the two disciples. And he, you know, they seen um, Jesus standing there in his glory. Jesus wasn't a ghost. Okay. And they said that he also seen Moses and Elijah there in their, uh, you know, glory. Okay. They were not earthbound. Okay. But anyway, when they left the mountain, the guys, I'm sorry, after that, the guys opened their eyes up. They lifted their eyes up. There was no one there but Jesus and him alone in just like he was before. And then when Jesus took them from the mountain and they went to walk down, Jesus told them, tell no man of the vision you seen. It was simply a vision. It had nothing to do with seeing an earthbound spirit. Jesus was not an earthbound spirit. All that was, was, G was God's way of showing those disciples who Jesus was. They heard the voice of God coming from the cloud. This is my son. Listen to what he tells you. Okay. That's all it was. It was a vision, a vision by God. So you see, we just have to look at the scriptures and we have to read it for the, for the way it's worded and take it for what it says. We can't make other things out of it. But um, anyway, I just wanted to share this, this um, video with you guys. It's about the familiar spirits and, uh, do not be deceived. Okay. God bless you guys. Goodbye.